a hard galer. Fear keen fault to get the money to the fail, Agus Taktarna, Philip Agus Mary and Wright. Tasolukum, Gwilchid Galer, Slan Savalta, Eganom Show. Friends and friends of the West Limerick Singing Club, welcome to the Ramblin Pub, the home of Philip and Mary and Wright here in Abbey Field and the spiritual home of the West Limerick Singing Club, where on the first Friday of every month we meet for our monthly singing sessions, or indeed we did meet before the pandemic and COVID-19. It is our earnest wish that we will be able to meet face to face again and join one another in song when the restrictions are lifted. At the outset, let me firstly say our thoughts and prayers are with those who have been touched and affected by COVID-19 virus. And we wish to extend our sincere sympathies to those who have suffered a bereavement in recent months. In particular, our thoughts and prayers are with the family of our dear friends, Michael Church, Nora Butler, Paddy Borden and Kitty O'Donoghue, who have died since we last met. Gorev Laba Emask Nanev Oko. It has indeed been a strange 18 months, and no one could have foreseen what the future had in store for us when we last met for our singing session on the 6th of March 2020. We were hoping that we would have our Gary McMahon singing weekend last year, but we were disappointed. And again, we had renewed hope this year, but unfortunately, we have been able to hold the event. So, in this presentation, which we recorded recently at the Father Casey's GA Club, we present to you some of our members who will entertain you in song and in story. I hope you'll enjoy our presentation, which features some of our singers and our storytellers, and that will give you a flavour of what we in the West Limerick Singing Club enjoy every month and indeed during the Gary McMahon Singing Weekend, which we hope we will renew and revive and restore to its former glory in 2022. Slán go foil. The golden corn is high, my love, where wild winds whisper free. But I must take that lonely road that leads down to the sea. You sleep upon your towering hill where twilight shadows steal. And I hear the wild winds whispering, Come home to Abbey Field. The New York dawn is shining bright, Her streets are cold and grey. A man must leave the dying hours to greet the newborn day. My memory roams wild and free as I wait an alien dawn of Laurel who walked with me. To greet that summer morn Is that harvest moon Still shining bright As on the Shannon side And do stars or mean a halo Light up the meadows bright and who maidens guide that riverside and dance that forehand reel? And young lovers stray mean kill away near my town of Abbey Field. Where are they now in this garden band? Who fought with awesome glee, 
Mrevel ar iel yn hartnyd, Bomer ffoli fram dy hyl. O danol goini an do rwrc, I can but nem a few. The medal stand, so that freedom grand might hail that morning dew. The New York lights are shining bright, her streets are cold and grey. My feet are on the city street. But my dreams are far away. Soon I'll fly that starlit sky, and when twilight shadows steal, then you'll walk with me in my memory near my town of Abbeyfield. <laughs> Um, first of all, it's great to be back in Abbey Field again, singing songs that we didn't sing for the last definitely 18 months. Uh, we all know the reason. Um, it's great to see the friends and the old faces and the new faces that are appearing again. Um, Christy, Pat and myself travel together and we, we love to come to Abbey Field. So anyway, uh, so I'll sing a song anyway that was written by nearly an Abbey Field man, Gary Stone man, of course, Gary McMahon. And the funny thing about it that Gary and myself were of the same vintage. We were born the same year, and we were playing together. And Paddy Bon Brasnan from Dingle a great old Kerry footballer, was the selector. So it's a three, it's like the three legs of a pot anyway. That, that, so I, I, I tr I'll try to do justice to the song that Gary wrote in honor of Paddy Bond the day he died. He died on a monster final day. So, Shin <clears throat> And Gary says, anyway. The bond is dead. The sad news spread like wildfire through our town. As to Fitzgerald Stadium, I made my way along. We're rebel cark and carry now the battle lines are drawn. And the tricolored flag stood at half mast for our peerless Paddy Bond. The Mecklecordes reek stand proudly o'er looking Killarney town. From above the crowds, the darkening clouds, the rains came gently down. The carry mist, it softly kissed each antlered stag and fawn. All nature stood a mourning for our peerless Paddy Bond. From thirty six to fifty three, he graced the green and gold. And children on their parents' knees, his mighty deeds unfold. A voice like gripped on leather, a full back with brains and brawn. 
we will never see is a likes again our peerless Paddy Bond. The forward sphered him on the ground and likewise in the air as he kept outside the raging tide from his gold man and the square his board and gear a dingle pierced and a silent in the dawn. No more will his trawler be skippered by the peerless Paddy Bon. No more will he tell of the angry swell as he round the blasted moor or watch the gannet spiraling or hear the Atlantic roar our fish for silver herrings are see the golden prawns and the seabirds cry in the kingdom sky for our peerless Paddy Bon. May the carry sad that you loved so well press gently on your breast as you lie in gatten a glory with comrades you love best at that final call we'll play football when we meet on god's green lawn and the band will lead us round the field with our peerless Paddy Bon. Uh, this is a tribute song to the fiddle master Padre O'Keefe, who actually lived in my own neck of the woods. <clears throat> so. Tis of a famous fiddler to you I will recall. His name was Padre O'Keefe, the greatest of them all. He was born and reared in Glowntown, a wild but lovely place. And his music roused up many the heart and brought smiles to many a face. In his early years, old Padraig taught in his local school. But like many a young lad before, he was not born by rule. For the love of music called him forth, and to this he did give in, until he became a master of his beloved violin. Twas many the cold and wintry night O'Keefe set out for home, having played for friends from near and far and some from across the foam. From Scafty Glen to Brosna Town, Killarney to Brosna Town, there wasn't a soul who did not hear of this fiddler of renown. Sixty-three it was the year that Padraig passed away. But we are glad and happy still that his music lives today. And when we hear his music played, though one or two are gone, we know that we are listening to this roving fiddler man. Now to conclude and finish the story of this man. I hope you all will favour me and think wherever you can. And as you leave this house tonight with memories of my song, 
May your hearts remain forevermore with a roving fiddler man. Thank you. Another one again. No, the three was sing together. We sing a lot together. Uh, Pat Christie and myself. Uh, another song of Gary McMahon's that we like, and um, it's about Kerry Green and Gold, isn't that right, lads? And um, so Pat, a composer in its own right, Christy, a singer of renown, and I, well, I have to do the talking. <laughs> 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 if you don't mind. <laughs> so away we go. You say tradition comes for naught when two teams take the field. I fear you are mistaken, lad, but time will make you yield. And when your hair's as grey as mine, and the years have made you old, then you'll invoke the truth I spoke in the kingdom's green and gold. You cannot box or bottle it or grasp it in your hand. But pride of race and love of place inspires a love of land. Time honor is your birthright, you'll never break the mold. For it's deep within the soul of us who wears the green and gold. Grey lakes and mountains soaring high, Mount Brandon's holy hill. The little church at Goderus, our language living still. Of Skelly Grock, stout football stock that can't be bought or sold. For our county's fame, we play the game in the kingdom's green and gold. And when the battle's fiercest stand, our backs are to the wall. We stay alive, we will survive, we stumble but don't fall. For the spirit of our fathers and our stories yet untold will ensure, we will endure in the kingdom's green and gold. We save or carry victories, we salute a gallant foe. And when we lose, there's no excuse, we just, we just pack, pack our bags and go. So raise your glass, each lad and lass, to our warriors brave and bold. Who each year aspire to the Sam Maguire in the kingdom's green and gold. Come on, Um, I'm going to try a song that was written by a man called Frank O'Brien um, about a beautiful little village in the west coast of County Clare and a village that I know is to the hearts of many people in the West Limerick Singers Club, Cora Clare, and it's the Chapel Gates in Cora Clare. <clears throat> I've been away from Ireland now for nearly 50 years. And thoughts of home are still so dear to me. Often I gaze across the ocean and my eyes grow dim with tears. Let me tell you of the visions that I've seen. As a barefoot child I stood there when the summer sun did shine Across the steeple of that little church down there And we gathered every evening while the weather would be fine Around the chapel gate in Cura Clare so in dreams I'd love to ramble down the village street And meet the boys and girls gathered there For to sing the good old songs Telling of old Ireland's wrongs Around the chapel gate in Cura Clare there were 
weddings planned and matches meet and stories old and new around among the boys that gathered there and we played the football matches till the final whistle blew around the chapel gate in Curaclair. We would talk about the neighbours, the weather and the times, and to the boys who were courting on the sly. We would watch the Colleen's passing down and bid them the time of day. And perhaps we'd catch a twinkle in their eye. So in dreams I'd love to ramble down the village street and meet the boys and girls gathered there for to sing the good old songs telling of old Ireland's wrongs around the chapel gate in Curaclair. Now I'm growing old and weary in this land so far away, but I'll return to Ireland yet if God will spare. And when all is done, they'll leave me at the closing of my days inside the chapel gate in Curaclair. So in dreams I'd love to ramble down the village street and meet the boys and girls gathered there for to sing the good old songs telling of old Ireland's wrongs around the chapel gate in Cura Thank you. <laughs> oh. um, Owen asked me to, to try a second one. Um, so I'll, I'll do a rebel song and um, a one that I suppose I started singing in 2016, the time of the centenary, and it has stayed in the repertoire since, is The Dying Rebel. <clears throat> The night was dark and the fight was over. The moon shone down O'Connell Street. I stood alone where brave men perished. Those men are gone there go to meet my only son was shot in Dublin fighting for his country bold he fought for Ireland and Ireland only the harp the shamrock green, white, and gold. The first I met was a grey-haired father searching for his only son. I said, old man, there's no use searching. For up to heaven, your son has gone. The old man cried out broken hearted. Bending low, I heard him see. I knew my son was too kind-hearted. I knew my son would never yield. 
The next I met was the dying rebel. Bending low, I heard him say, God bless my home in dear Cork City. God bless the cause for which I die. My only son was shot in Dublin, fighting for his only son. I knew my son was too kind-hearted. I knew my son would never yield. Thank you. I remember it, and I remember it well. It wasn't all that long ago, too. New Year's Day or any other Sunday of the year, for that matter. All the women going into church on a Sunday being in the same uniform, the shawl. And at that time, you know the difference between a big farmer's wife and a small farmer's wife and a tradesman's wife and a labourer's wife because of the great variety of shawls they used to wear. They had from the sober black shawl to the fawn paisley shawl with that very rich variegated pattern all around the bottom and an abundance of tassels. Then you had the green and black shawl, greatly favoured by the younger women, and the brown shawl and the reddish brown shawl that you would see inside in Tralia. And the different ways those women had for wearing those shawls. You had a big fat jolly woman. She had the shawl thrown away back in her shoulders and she giving go far around her. <laughs> then you had the woman with the biting tongue and the hard work for the neighbour. She had it pulled out a little pookeen over her face, nothing showing but the nose and the white of the eye. <laughs> And the different uses those shawls could be put in. Say if we were blown bed and the husband might say to the wife, I feel the cold, and complaining, she'd get up and throw the shawl down him, saying, all the fine men I gave up to marry you, you perished old crater. Or say if there was a boy conveying a girl home from a ball night, you know, and if they decided to sit down for a while, and if she happened to be wearing a shawl, how handy it would be if the grass was wet. Well, they did a man tell me one time. There was so much fun getting her out of it. It was like taking the paper off a Christmas parcel. Well, there were men going in those days, and they wouldn't know their own wives if they saw them in any other outfit but the shawl. They were so accustomed to them. There was this man, Patty Mickey Jack. He was going into the market in Killarney in the springtime. He was going in buying seed oats. And he said to his wife, Kate, he said, follow me in around 11 o'clock with the money, for she was the treasurer. He hit off for town anyway. And who came to the house in a while's time but the postman? With a big parcel of clothes from America for Kate from the sister over. All domestic operations were suspended at that hour of the morning by Kate. She had to open the parcel, and you know there were garments and knick-knacks inside in that parcel that the poor woman couldn't put a name on. She took a dress out of the box, and she put it on her. Well, if there was one flower in that dress, there was a thousand. She'd be in great danger to go anywhere near a beehive with it. She took a coat out. I'm only picking things at random now. It was a kind of a slaty blue coat with a taste of four. And two big lavers of pockets that you could fit a pick of spuds into. And a pair of shoes. And the heels in those shoes were every bit as long as my finger and every bit as thin. She took a hat out of the box and she put it on her. Well, she looked like nothing but the Queen of Mesopotamia, with acres of knitting coming down over her face with little navy blue dots in it and a little bit of satin to tight under the chin. And Kate, God bless the woman, she was long and lanky enough, but the high heels drove her up on the bone altogether. <laughs> she had to bend down to see herself inside in the looking glass. And then she saw the time it was, which was nearly 11 o'clock. Oh, so she took me so long to get into them. When will I be out of them again? Do you know, so she, I think I'll go into town like this and knock her eyes out of party. Long time since I knocked her eyes out of them. 
as the man said, thus a coat that she hit for town. And not only the people, but the animals. The animals left good grazing in the fields and ran towards the ditches of the road to see this tough sailing by her. And as she was going down for her inside in Killarney, they were all looking at her. They thought she was a return yank. Even the Jarvis were drawing up and they were saying, Cat around the lakes, ma'am, cat around the lakes. Everyone watched her as she went down the street. And she said to one man, did you see my husband? Indeed, I did not, to see, for I was never in America. <laughs> and where was the husband? He was over in the middle of the marketplace. He was after buying the seed oats, and he was waiting now for Kay to come in with the money. And when he saw this apparition sailing over towards him, he began backing away, you know, half afraid like, Saying, wasn't she very free making for a stranger? And she said, Hello, Patty. Hello, what? Says he, Patty, there's the money for the seed oats. And Patty looking in through the netting, and when he saw his wife's face inside, Well, Kate, he said, if that's you, what must your sister in America be like? <laughs> Thank you. I'll sing to you of a lovely place It is where I would like to be It is there I spent my youthful days In merriment and glee It's Collins Fair I do declare And it's with them I will go to take a ramble down the banks where the Mulcair River flows. The hills of Dark and of Drag Isle, tis amongst you I remain. Where I could pass my time away round lovely palace green. Fond memories always take me back to the days long, long ago when I used to ramble down the banks where the Mulca River flows. Tis well I do remember too when in my youth and bloom I wandered on the mountain side by Cap Amor and Doom, by Carrig Beg and Castle Town, the place you all well know, and Gartha Bas muddy banks where the Mulca River flows. And so tonight, my comrades bright, I will bid you all adieu. And as I finish those last few lines, I'll quickly tell to you. Train up your youth to hunt and shoot, with a gun and how to go. And haunt the game that still remains where the Mulca River flows. Shinnawi. Yeah, oh, thank Dear friends, we meet in love tonight on Columbia's tranquil shores. Three thousand miles from Erin's Isle that we might see no more. And dearer still is that fair hill than any other to me. And in our own dear native land, we call it Nognishi. So dear to me fond memories, sweet recollection brings. 
hands. How oft I listened a late long day to the thrush and the blackbird sing. How softly did that cuckoo call from out yon holly tree. And how sweet that sound re-echoed round the hill of Knocknishy. <clears throat> how deeply pictured in my mind the sights from there I seen. There's Kish and Giva Ballymote and the hills of old Gortin. The lovely grows round the temple house and streams down spreading lee. May the heavens be with you, Caramor, and the hill of Nognishi. There stands the ruined abbey where our people's bones now rest. That same dear land that gave them birth now calls them to her breast. Whilst I am forced to leave my home by a foreign tyranny, farewell, farewell to Caramore and the hill of Nognishy. Tis oft I have viewed your mighty crops whilst blooming in their pride. From Kulani unto Tlunakul, all along the mountain side, the river my so gently flows from there unto the sea. Farewell to those, farewell to all, from the hill of Nognishi. Farewell to evening dances where our merry comrades meet. When the fiddler says no, boys and girls, get up and shake your feet. For tis there you'll find those callings fair, who will fill your heart with glee. Sure I'd risk my life for to make my wife a girl from Nognishi. The times have passed since I have gone. Dark heads have no turn grey. Young lives rise up from every heart. The old ones fade away. This lonely song of exile is all that is left for me. So farewell, farewell to Caramor and the hill of Nognishi. Thank you very much. fair in the merry month 
of June. The blackbirds and the thrushes, their notes did sweetly tune. I strayed in meditation down by a silvery vein, and twas there I spied a comely girl on the lovely banks of plain. This maid, being tall and handsome, in every degree, her radiant looks and snow-white cheeks, my heart she stole from me. I modestly saluted her, her favour for to gain. And we stood in conversation on the lovely banks of plain. I told this maid I loved her since first I'd seen her face. But she told me that in her heart another took my place. A lock of his hair she then produced as it commenced to rain. My eyes grew dim within my head on the lovely banks of glen. She said, kind sir, I'm sorry if I've offended you. But my true love is far away and to him I will be true. And if he won't return again a maid I will remain and cherish the hope that he'll return to the lovely banks of Glen. We kissed, shook hands and parted and I returned home. Twas well I knew that evening, twas far I'd have to roam, since this fair maid refuses me. the main and never again will I return to those lovely banks of blame <laughs> <laughs> you may see speak about Easter week and the heroes of 98, of the Fenian men who roamed the glen in victory or defeat. Their names are placed on history's page, their memory will endure. 
not a song is sung for our darling sons in the valley of Knockanoor. There was Welsh and lions and Alton boys, all young and in their pride. In every house, in every town, they were always side by side. The Republic bold they did uphold, though outlawed on the moor. And side by side they bravely died in the valley of Knockanoor. They took them then beside a fence to where the forest did bloom. Like brothers so they faced the foe for to meet their dreadful doom. When Dalton spoke, his voice it broke with a passion proud and pure. For our land we die as we face the sky in the valley of Knockanoor. T'was on a neighbouring hillside we listened in calm dismay. In every house, in every town, a maiden knelt to pray. They're closing in around them now, with rifle fire so sure. And Alton's dead and lions is down in the valley of Knockanoor. But ere the guns could seal his fate, Candy had broken through. With the prayer to God, he spawned the sod, and against the hill he flew. The bullets tore his flesh in two, yet he cried with a passion pure. For my comrade's death, revenge I'll get, in the valley of Knockanoo. <coughs> the golden sun is setting now behind the field and lee. The pale, pale moon is rising far out beyond Tralee. The dismal stars and clouds afar are darkened o'er the moor and the banshee cried where our heroes died in the valley of Knockanoor. O Walsh and Lions and Dalton brave although your hearts are clay Yet in your stead we have brave men yet to guard the gap today. While grass is found on Irish ground, your memory will endure. So God guard and keep the place you sleep. In the valley of Nakanur. Lovely. It's funny how time goes so slow when you're younger, and it feels like forever before you reach twenty one. But time don't stand still, time waits for no man. 
in the blink of an eye, the time marches on. Don't ponder too long on what if or what may be. The past is the past and time you can't change. If given the chance, we'd all do things different. And words that were said, we can't rearrange. So it's nice that we all are here together, spending the time in the company of friends. Nobody knows what may come tomorrow, so let's make the most of the time that God sends. I have a friend, and once he did tell me that when he goes out, he enjoys every night. In case it's his last, he enjoys every moment. One day he said, he's bound to be right. What good is wealth, or fame, or fortune? What is it all for at the end of the day? We're just passing through and you can't take it with you. I'd rather my friends that I made on the way. So let's nice that we all are here together, spending the time and the company of friends. Nobody knows what may come tomorrow, so let's make the most of the time that God sends. Yeah, I'll sing a Sean McCarthy song, The Key Above the Door. The birds are singing in the hills While rivers run below Green rushes whisper in the glen The soft winds gently blow a red-haired woman weeps alone The sun sings lower and lower The quiet man is searching for The key above the door When stranger bands roamed o'er the land he joined the Fenan men. The Kerry boys were well prepared for trouble in the glen. The road to nowhere turned dark with ugly alien gore. The quiet man was dreaming of the key above the door. This hill is mine, this hill is mine, will hold with sword and gun. No stranger's hand will take our land while lonely rivers run. From Bally Grenon on the hill to Bally Bonnan shore. A soft voice whispers, Come, my love, 
there's a key above the door. I wish that I were young once more to be a child again. Then I would meet the quiet man who roamed the troubled glen. I'd see a red-haired woman smile as eagles proudly soar and green rushes whispering there's a key above the door. Sean in right hand, brave Thomas Sheen, and John Joe Lyle and True. Though you have gone to your long rest, we will remember you. You live forever in our thoughts. We love you more and more. In the long nights, we'll dream about the key above the door. Now he whose pen spread magic tales has left this earthly plain. Dear Morris, we'll remember you, we'll not forget your name. Your stories, they will never die, they live forevermore. The quiet man, while rivers run, and the key above the door. Well. I'll, I'll try the Limerick Vales in honour of Kitty, our faithful friend who was buried yesterday. In my dreams I long to go to those places far away, to my emerald isle across the Irish Sea. I can see those hills and vales, and my lovely Limerick vales. I wake up, and all I have are memories. But those dreams, they are so clear, and those places are so dear. Yet there's always something special on my mind. Had I been young again, it is there I would remain. I would never leave my limerick veils behind. Now there's Kappa Moore and Doon, there's Kilmallock, Brough and Groom, Shanna Golden and Askeaton, too, I see. Newcastle West and Abbey Fail, Sweet Adair and Old Red Keel, and my lovely native village of Brewery. But those dreams, they are so clear, and those places are so dear. Yet there's always one thing special on my mind. Had I been young again, it is there I would remain. I would never leave my limerick veils behind. In my dreams I oft times go to those places that I know. I can see visit Limerick City in my dreams. I could see the treaty stone, Perry Square. Square and Gary Own, and go home by Patrick's Well and Old Raheen. 
But those dreams, they are so clear, and those places seem so dear. Yet there's always one thing special on my mind. Had I been young again, it is there I would remain. I would never leave my Limerick Vales behind. No, I'd never leave my Limerick Vales behind. The late Pat Buster from Marte, thinking of all the changes that had caught in his lifetime, put pen to paper and he wrote this little song. There are changes, no doubt, that have all come about since my boyhood and youthful days. With milk in bulk tanks and computers in banks, so it is leaving us all in a haze. God be with the old times and the stories and rhymes and the pint in an old-fashioned bar and the journey to mass with a lively young ass sitting proud in the old donkey car. Now it is often I sigh for the days now gone by when we used to drive into town. Bags of turf on the rail that we offer for sale at two shillings or one half a crown. Times often were bad and I feel rather sad for the days of the last world war when the turf that we sold was as precious as gold piled high on the old donkey car. Then I tired of the bogs, and out hunting with dogs, to Dublin's fair city I came. After looking around, a job soon I found in a college of great rugby fame. It was at my own pace, and I travelled that place from Clontarf to Rotmines and Rotgar. But my thoughts would wander back to our faithful ass Jack, harnessed on to the old donkey car. Back home once again, I returned and then settled down on the farm once more, looking after the cows and the bonnets and sows and counting the eggs by the score, coming home from the shop with a pony and trap, or cycling to a road without her, or travelling its mile to the Cramley in style, standing proud in the old donkey car. In the year 53, I crossed over the sea, and in England I spent many years, going out for to work with a German or Turk, and admiring their ladies and peers. But the Lords and the Queen did not win my esteem. I prefer more my pint in a jar, and they often came home from away o'er the foam to drive out in the old donkey car. Now the years have now fled, and poor Jack is long dead, he will gallop the roads no more. The Atlantic I've crossed in a jumbo jet fast and have strolled by New York's silver shore. Men have gone to the moon and there's prospects that soon they will find a more far distant star. But I'd swap all their planes, super spacecraft and trains to go back to the old donkey car. Uh, this is a song uh, written by Brian McMahon about the River Field back in the days when it had plenty of salmon and trout and people around made their living fishing with rods. But sadly, it's not the same today. Brian, of course, you all know, was Owen's father and a great man to put pen to pay for and all that. So, Hope I'll uh, do it justice. My heart tonight is lonely for my sire land, though many miles of ocean lie between. My heart tonight is home again in Ireland, with many a smile and vocal and colleen. I would that in that green isle o'er the billows One hour of youth this roving lad could steal I'd stand again enchanted by the willows 
Upon thy banks my silver river feel. I mind me when I walk the summer meadows Beside my Nora with a glowing face Her features cheesed by many hazel shadows Showed loveliness and gentleness and grace that lovely river brimmed with salmon over the smell of gorse beside us we could feel and there she parted from her foolish rover upon thy banks my silver river feel i've had success or so the world reckons I'd everything I wish for at my hand While o'er the sea that Irish river beckons And how could I deny its clear command For what is riches when the heart is aching or what is wealth when all my spirits reel To stand again and watch the red dawn breaking Above thy banks my silver river feels Tonight I see a cottage fire a-gleaming The elves are dancing around the fairy ring while up the stream come silver salmon teeming along with all the urgency of spring <coughs> and when the good lord thinks it's time for homing perhaps he let my weary spirit steal to linger for a moment in the gloaming Upon thy banks my silver river feel To linger for a moment in the gloaming Above thy banks my silver river feel Some fidgety folk we have all of us known Who are famous for being out too soon For the two o'clock dinner or four o'clock tea They are sure to turn up around noon Such a whimsical fancy on her come I own And in fact the reverse is my state For it always occurs that wherever I go I'm exactly ten minutes too late Punctuality's all very proper, I know, and all hurry and hurry I hate. But it always occurs that wherever I go, I be exactly ten minutes too late. I could hop on a fancy or jump on a bus to be nicely in time for a train. But I'm all in a fever and quite enough fuss, my efforts are surely in vain. When I find myself safe at the station at last And believe it five minutes to eight I observe by the clock that it's five minutes past So that I am ten minutes too late Punctuality's all very proper, I know And all hurry and worry I hate but it always occurs that wherever I go, I'm exactly ten minutes too late. I was once in my life very deeply in love, and I courted in verse and in prose. I obtained me a lock of her hair and a glove, and I made up my mind to propose. Well, the cab sped away as I knocked on the door, and the answer decided my fate. 
For my rifle had been there ten minutes before, so that I was ten minutes too late. Punctuality's all very proper, I know, and I'll hurry and worry I hate. But it always occurs that wherever I go, I'm exactly ten minutes too late. I could sing for a month in the verse of a song of the troubles I've had to endure. This misfortune that's followed me all my life long and will haunt me till death, I am sure. When my fitful career is approaching its end, and I lie in a critical state. Sure, no matter what physic my doctor will send, he will send him ten minutes too late. Punctuality's all very proper, I know, and I'll hurry and worry, I hate. But it always occurs that wherever I go, I'm exactly ten minutes too late. I'll try a piece called Observing the Pieties, written by Gary McMahon. I confess I'm a creature of habit, as down life's road I go, observing annual rituals a must for me. So before the crib on Christmas Eve, I kneel with all the clan, and on the feast of Stephen, go to Dingle for the run. Then for sweet St. Bridget's day, a straw cross I have made, to hang above the threshold whereon it will be laid. In the house of my Redeemer, I chant a hymn of praise, my throat crisscrossed with candles on the feast day of St. Blaise. On show of Tuesday, I eat pancakes dipped in honey from the hive, and thank the Lord that yet I live, another year survived. And when the gospel long was read before the end of Lent, home I bear the blessed palm, breathe in its sacred scent. On Good Friday, I eat hard cross buns, and before the day has passed, gather cockles from the seashore and keep the old black fast. And then on Easter Sunday morning, I rise to see the dancing sun come forth, not forgetting Patrick's day between when the shamrock I will sport. The coming of the swallow, the awakening of the earth, the promise of a primrose I await with bated breath. And lest a look should follow me and cause me cause me to grieve, I never bring white thorn into the house on May Eve. June bonfires once I lighted on the feast day of St. John, a custom all but vanished as relentless time moves on. July sees me hit for Milktown, and Willie Clancy in County Clare, in Marin's pub I pay my sub, and the song or two sing there. And then is monster final time when the piper must be paid to Thurlis, Cork, Killarney, the pilgrimage is made. Again I fetch, fetch my fishing rod before the season's out and take a while to wet a line and coax the elusive trout. And then to the pattern of the Virgin and from thence to Puck Fair. And the races of Listole come next and I'm certain to be there. Do drench fields provide me with mushrooms gleaming white, while plump and juicy blackberries from my sore eyes are a sight. When come November of the souls and all the leaves are shed, will you light for me a candle as I do for the dead? You've heard an old one's story, each word I say is true. Blessed Trice, take this advice I now implore of you. Don't turn your back on Dukas or on history's learned lore, but pass it on before it's gone and lost forevermore. I'll, I'll do I'll do a more serious one. Yeah, it's called the Bogman from Dimbia. It's about the hiring fairs in Kerry. I met him on the Milltown Road on a chill December day, as he remade his load of turf for to have a good display. 
A sun-brown, wily little man whose trials with life were seen on his treadbare, well-worn coat and battered brown cabine. The road from Cadenbridge, said he, is mighty rough and long. It's turned my turf camp upside down, now they'll want it for a song. In Castle, Maine, they like it high, the sods all black and sound, and before they'd give you a bob for it, they'd walk it round and round. Since I left Limpe before the dawn, I haven't wet my tongue. Gad, said he, I'm weary now, we always can be young. It's over 50 years ago since I first became a farmer's boy, and the chill that's in the winter day, then I could well defy. You see them hills away up there, and sleeve mish it crossed our view. Well, it was often with an empty belly, it's tiresome heights I knew. From St. Patrick's Day to harvest time, with pike and scythe in hand, we hired outside St. John's Tralee for to till Norcarry's land. At Fert Kilmiley Belly High was where I learned my trade, to plough and sow, to reap and mow, and to court the farmers made. For scarce five bob a week it was, come rain, come hail or snow, the youth that are growing up today, they do not hardship no. They sized you up before the hairdo for an active, healthy frame. They did not want the weak or old. They were like a housewife choosing game. You seldom sat beside their fire. You slept up near the sky. You eat your meals apart from them, for you were the farmer's boy. And it was oft time things went against the grain, and the food was scarce and rough, and you would be quickly shown the door if you gave them any guff. And when it came to Saturday, you might have to vamp at home again, with little in your pocket for a drink at Castle Main. The pint was tuppence halfpenny then, there it always tasted good. You would hear it singing in the tap, and it coming from the wood. At, at Clahan Bridge, our roots came off. We had no corns then. Up Glounch got in to Ticket's Bridge, where we'd lace them up again. And when we'd get to Milltown, for a lesser wage, for a new bus, we would try and hope to get a week or two with the big men round the stride. The farmers there were big and proud. They valued every bob, and they would sure reserve for you some tough, laborious job. But Gart said he, we were as hard as nails, and rough and ready fair, we faced our work as happy as our greetings at Puck Fair. Out with the dawn, in with the dark, ours was no eight hour day, and there was damned the fear when four o'clock drew near, did you have sweet cake and tea. You dug the spuds all in a row, paced by the farmer's son. You'd have your shirt stuck to your back before the day was done. Week in, week out, that was our lot, our aim at work or play, was to spend the winter time back in the homelands of Glimbe. But when the harvest it was over, with our turf cats, till then we hit the road. That's why I am reclamping now, it's the height that sells the load. I hope to get five bob for this, with a mug of tea thrown in, and a duck egg for good measure, if I could sell to Judy Flynn. You'll never see your like again, we joy in labour found, and we had the will to be content to stay on Irish ground. So twice a week from this day on, the load the turf, the bills they'll help to pay, and we'll spend a happy Christmas time in the Boglands round Limbe. Seeing that we're facing all Ireland time again and that Limerick are still in the running, I thought I might do one about the late Tommy Quaid. And this, of course, was written by the late Gary McMahon. The apples in the orchard are ripe for picking now. Brown, gold and red, the leaves are shed. 
from bare and drooping boughs. The chestnuts too are falling, lying scattered in the glade, but a hodler's eye won't see them. Fiohnus, Tommy Quaid. He catches a swooping swallow going through a barn door. That gold man with the eagle eye, whose face we'll see no more. He ruled the square with skill and flair, undaunted and unafraid. But his race is run, our darling son, Fiohnus, Tommy Quaid. From 76 to 93, his was a starring role leading by example as he guarded Limerick's goal. It is hard to understand it all, as in cold clay he's laid. Why did he have to die so soon? Fiohnus, Tommy Quaid. We cheered him in Killarney, in Cork and Turles Town. Croke Park, the Cooley Mountains, likewise the Gaelic grounds. Our star from West Limerick, whose fame will never fade. The best we've seen in the white and green, Fiohnus, Tommy Quaid. We oft recall how he pucked that ball with sweet and stylish strike. As his hurly blade, it caught a swade through friend and foe alike. With lightning fast reflexes, it was many the game he played. Will we ever see his likes again? Fiohnus, Tommy Quaid. He met his doom in life's full bloom. Our tears flow fast and free. For his grieving wife, his parents dear, and his loving children three. Tonight, he lies in Effen, here on earth, his last game played. Will we ever see his likes again? Few owners, Tommy Quaid. <laughs> My dreams will come with joy to some and come with grief to more. As it did to me, my country, that dear old Erin shore. I dreamt I stood upon a hill beside a lovely vale. And t'was there I spied a comely girl, and her name was Granwell. I thought her lovely hair hung down, so fair, and she was dressed in green. I thought she was the fairest soul that e'er my eyes had seen. As I drew near, I then could see near the pleasant morning gale. As she went along, she sang her song, sang I'm poor old Granwell. In O'Connell's time in 29, we had no braver men. They struggled hard both day and night for to bring back our rights again. But by coercion we were bound and our sons were sent to jail. But we need not fret, we'll have freedom yet, says poor old Granwell. I he thought I saw a noble harp, by her side she he let it fall. She he played a tune of Brian Boru, Gary Owen and Tara's Hall. And God save Ireland was the last for our martyrs who died in jail. But we need not fret. We'll have home rule yet, says poor old Granwell. Awaken from my slumber, excited by my plight. I thought I saw the clear daylight, but instead I saw the night. 
Ah, he looked around and I could see not but the walls of an English jail. And that was the last I ever saw of a poor old Gran Well. That's it. <clears throat> One night as we assembled in Kilmore's romantic vein, we gathered for to drill me boys, we had but nine or ten. And as the moon shone bright and clear, we mustered forty-four. So we drilled from that night forward on the sand hills of Kilmore. We had some men from Milfortlen, some more from Outer Gown. We had the boys of the Cashin and the sea coast all around. We had one O'Neill from Boherborn, who's now in Australia shore, who filled the ranks of our Fenian band on the sand hills of Kilmore. We had Causeway men and Ballyduff and from the Castle Green. We had Ballyhoig and Femlixna, most glorious to be seen. And many's the starry moonlight night that drilled through Rattles Plains and all around by the ferry bridge to kill more home again. You should have seen those forty-four all gathered near the tide with their guns upon their shoulders and their swords down by their side. The sharp crack of their cocker cart just as the day did dawn as they mingled with the plover and the grouse's lonely call. Our captain was a tall young man whose age was scarce eighteen. Although being young, his heart was true, he dearly loved the green. And many the faithful night until the hour of half past four, they were drilled by Captain Nolan on the sand hills of Kilmore. May the God of peace and liberty attend our captain's call and provide our gallant moonlight boys with powder, shell and ball to conquer all in farmers and lay grabbers in their gore and bless the ranks of our Fenian band on the sand hills of Kilmore. Um, Danny Buckley was um, one of the few men who survived the Titanic trip to, to America and afterwards he wrote this song, King Williamstown, um, about um, his thoughts and feelings on leaving Ireland. <coughs> My bonny bark rolls light and free across the ocean foam. It bears me far from Inish Fall to seek a foreign home. A lonely exile driven neath misfortune's cruel frown. Far away from home and my cherished friends around sweet King William's town. While here upon the deck I stand to view the fading shore, kind thoughts, sad thoughts arise within my mind of friends I'll see no more, of childhood deeds and happy hours, and as the tears roll down, I'm still thinking of my dear old friends around sweet King William's town. <laughs> Shall I no more walk upon that shore 
our view those mountains high. Our gaze along black water banks I strolled while as a boy. Or watch the sun or knock the ball light up the header brown before it flings its final beams over sweet King Williamstown. I know not yet, but I fondly hope that where'er my footsteps roam, to cherish always in my heart the love of friends and home. So fades the shore, and o'er my soul the night falls softly down. May God be with you, Ireland, and sweet King William's town. My Irish fellow countrymen, alas, we mourn today. For dead has claimed our hero famed, his spirit passed away. Our exiled friends in foreign land with sorrow heard the tale. For they hoped once more to clasp his hand in the old Abbey fell. In the land days when men arose at Michael David's call, he was prepared to meet the foe, oh, the bayonet and the ball. He proudly raised the green flag high, and never yet it quail. While martial music reached the sky from his band in Abbey Fell. When O'Grady came with fire and ball and burned the dwellings down. For hiring crew, for to subdue all oh, the country and the town. Twas Father Casey's powerful league that soon brought on the sail. For the bed of Swint without the rent that day in Abbey fell. No wonder that the people all are full of one grief. Mavron is gone, that holy man, that fiery guilty chief, who never yet deny the poor nor scorned the orphans well for they left their blessings at his door in the old abbey fell when his master called he did obey and freely Gave consent. So let us all unite today just to raise that monument 
our exiled patrons, one and all far home, will quickly sail just to see that you towering high or dear old Abbey Fair. Are you the man I heard them saying they kill my goat with your old train? Why did you kill her? Come, explain, on the railway line to add. I'm <clears> sorry <throat> to say it was me all right. They killed your little goat last night. But you're on the track she had no right on the railway line to add. It is your old man that is to blame. Why didn't you pull up your train? My poor old goat that had meat like crane you killed in the railway line to add. It is there my woman that you were wrong. Don't you know my train she is powerful strong? How could I halt her? when she was flying along the railway line to Arda. Your blooming train can scarcely hoot, all smoky hole of ashen suit. It will very soon be off the route from the railway line in Arda. Don't mind my train, but tell me this. You're gamey looking, do you know what it is? Maybe you'll give me one old kiss on the railway line to Arda. Get out from me, you blasted rogue. The cheek of you, you gomologue. I flatten you with my kit hole on the railway line to add you. Here is a non to shout and roar. I kissed far nicer girls than you before. <laughs> and most of them came back for more on the railway line to add you. I'd like my job than kissing you. I'd be shot taken for a thing to do. With a puss in you like a carry blue on the railway line to add you. I carry blue puss. Would be more tasteful than your mouse. <laughs> I'm telling you, he'd fit in with your old frozen schnauz. I think now when beauty came, it passed you out on the red line to add her. You insulting scamp, I let you see that I will sue the company and for my goat that will pay me in the railway line to add her. Tis there, my woman. I'll second on. Against you, ma'am, they have the law. And for you all your goats, they don't care a straw. And you might as well now hold your jaw on the railway line to add her. Hold my jaw, indeed I will. Not until myself you'll kill. May the devil roast your ass in hell from the railway line in Arda. Just a number of things there. Thanks uh, is due to everybody. To, first of all, to Father Casey's for making the hall available to us. They've always been so cooperative to us. And to Noel, the caretaker. Noel Murphy, the caretaker, who arranged things for us. To Mary O'Connor, our secretary. Mary keeps us, keeps us all um, appraised of developments and uh, keeps me on my toes, I can tell you, with phone calls and WhatsApp and texts and everything like that. To Philip, to you all who I rang, and every one of you gave a resounding yes that you'd be here if you could, and I'm grateful. I'm also grateful for you for your patience in um, waiting your turn and everything like that. But um, it was wonderful to see one another again. It was wonderful to, to know that we're still around and raring to go. Um, to Owen O'Sullivan by two for um, organising this and for asking us, could he record us? It will go out. We don't know yet when it will go out, um, but we hope to maybe coincide with the weekend of Gary's Festival. I looked at a note I had, and it was something I wrote last year, and I had, was apologising, and we put it up on Facebook, and I apologised that we weren't having the 2020 festival in October, but I sincerely hoped we'd be back for October 2021. Oh, Malaire Crater, you stupid boy. You know, do we know what's out there? And before I go, I just want to give you a few lines that I penned, and it's to the air of Cora Clare. I've been cocooned at home too long. I cannot even go out to meet my friends and neighbours or give them all a shout. As I ponder my situation in my state of isolation, I wonder what 
the future holds for me. Will I wander down the village streets in County Clare and listen to the singers and musicians there? Will I go to the Willie Clancy? I fear not, I fancy. And will the rambling house still be in Cora Clare? Now this virus, it came from the east in the springtime of the year and into our hearts and minds instilled a sense of fear. At the government's insistence, we had to keep a social distance. Is this what the future holds for me? Will I pick the wild blackberries in the hills around the stall, or hear the cuckoo call from the fields above Fanor? Will we gather at the chapel gate once more before it is too late? And will the rambling house still be in Cora Clare? Now we thought there'd be no football or hurling matches to be played. Um, that we'd have to watch the old ones on the TV being replayed. Um, but in my hour of desperation, I thought of one consolation. That the dubs six in a row, it might be delayed. <laughs> Oh, how I'd long to go to the All-Ireland Final in Croke Park, even if it was held in December in the pitch dark. How I long for the days of old when victory was for the green and gold. Oh, I wonder will those glory days ever again come back. No, what's the next after that? Um, I am sick, tired, worn and weary, listening to the radio. And people on the phone every day wanting to talk to Joe. To get their problems off their chest, I wish to God they'd give it a rest. How long more I can stick it, I really don't know. Oh, the advice we get from Neffet and the CMO. At the start was Tony, Simon Harris and Leo. Though the government have changed in name, the advice is still the same. Stay apart, wear a mask, and be a 5K, you can go. Now, our lives in the past year is like living in a bad dream. Our world turned upside down by this COVID-19. I'm trying to stay calm, waiting for my shot in the arm. Will they ever hurry up and give me my vaccine? Because when I get my vaccine, I'll be off without a care. My first stop will be the weekend down in the port of Rosslair. I promise in my own time to visit Knockrockery and Declan Kine and return to sing again in Coorra Clare. Oh, what's the last verse of it, lads? Oh, it's time to st finish up to say slan and finish up my song. I hope I haven't detained you all for far too long. But before I go away, I can only hope and pray that we will all meet face to face again before too long. And yes, we will walk down the village streets of Cora Clare. Yes, we will listen to the singers and musicians there. And I certainly fancy I'll go to the Willie Clancy and return again to the rambling house in Cora Clare. Fill up the land of the game. Come on. on. Philip, yeah. Carden, come on. I wish I was westward of Dingle. On the golden sands of Elbon, where I'd wait for the mountain of Brandon to appear in the red light of dawn. I gazed over Smerwick Harbor, see the yacht with its willowing sail. My body's here in the Bowery, my heart's in the land of the Gael. To free with the juice of the barley, it softens my will and my brain. 
And, and whenever I save a few dollars, I fall off the wagon again. For I'm thinking of Kerry and Ireland, the Blaskets and Fair County Bill. When the sun is a red ball of fire, as it sets on the land of the Gael. In my mind, in my mind I, I see every detail of mountains, valleys and seas. The butterfly dancing a hard night and kiss the long The few shall lose strife and co-parsley The primrose that bloom in the veil I leave the white flowers in the summertime When I am in the land of the gale Now the wind, like a knife, it goes through me and with hunger I'm ready to fall And the snowflakes are swelling around me As I head for the church mission hall For I hear the sweet sound of the skylark And I listen to the colors that wail As I Ocean, they call, call me to come back to the land of the gale. Now it's fifty long years since I left here, a young fellow still in my teens. Do I ever return? No, you ask me. I go back every night in my dreams For the call of my whole hands all powerful And I'm certain this time I will not fail Then I hear my own tongue And again I'll be young When I'm home in the land of the gale up our crowd. Yeah. <laughs> well done, lads. Thanks indeed. Uh, before we go, could I have just a moment's silence <clears throat> for those who are not with us yes. and those yeah. who have lost, we've lost since we oh, last yes. met. And I'm thinking especially of Michael Church, Nora Butler, Paddy Burton, and Kitty O'Donoghue. And I'm sure you all have other people. But just to remember them, how fondly they were, we were to be with them in their company and how we miss them. But I'm sure that there's a great sing song in another place, a higher place than this. Just. Thanks.